Have you heard of the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning? Let's chat about what it is and how does it compare with the Komari method. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I upload weekly videos on simplicity and joyful living. As someone that has an organizing business and speak often about organizing at different events, I absolutely love to read all the books about organizing and decluttering and watch all the shows and everything. In today's video, I want to chat about an international best-selling book called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my name is Helen. I am a Komari master consultant and trained professional organizer. I love to make videos exploring different aspects of the Komari method philosophy, sharing tips on decluttering and organizing, as well as just how to simplify and make more room for joy. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and come join me for a conversation each week. I read The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning about a few years ago and I remember really liking it. It's a very short book and it's an easy read. Recently, I borrowed it again from the library and I thought it would be a really fun video to do to compare the two different methods. Before we get started, I want to put in a disclaimer that these are my personal takeaways after reading these books. And for the purpose of comparing them, I am choosing specific passages and portions of the book in order to illustrate similarities as well as differences. I'm not going to be able to cover the full extent of both of these books. So let's get started. The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning is written by Margareta Magnussen. I'm definitely not pronouncing this right, so I'm going to put this name up here so you can see. She is 87 years old and she is a mother of five. This is the first book she's ever written that's published and it was a 2018 New York Times bestseller. I am comparing it to the life-changing magic of tidying up the Japanese art of decluttering and organizing and this is of course written by Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo is 36 years old, she is a mother of three and the life-changing magic of tidying up is also her first book. The English translation of it was published in 2014 and it was also a New York Times bestseller. The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning is really about getting your life in order so that you don't become a burden to your family and friends after you pass. The author mentioned that it's not really just for people who are dying or people who are old. It's just really for anybody who wants to let go of clutter that no longer means anything to them. And it's a permanent form of organization that makes your everyday run more smoothly. Comparing this to the Komari method, the Komari Tidying Festival is also a permanent way of tidying up where you go through all of your things and and you think about whether each of those items bring you joy and is supporting you to live your ideal life. By successfully completing this once in a lifetime task, you will gain the lifestyle that will bring you the most joy. Based on these descriptions, I think the Swedish death cleaning is more about inspiring you to tidy for other people, whereas the Komari method is inspiring you to tidy for yourself. However, at the end of the day, I do believe with both methods, whether you are tidying up motivated by want, not wanting to be a burden for your loved ones or you want to live a more joyful life yourself, I do believe that both you and your loved ones will benefit from you to tidy up. So how do you start tidying? In The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning, the author suggests to start by going through your basement and your attics and also the cupboard by your front door so that you can temporarily get rid of your clutter. The author said these are the areas that people tend to forget about so it will help you learn that you no longer need these items and that you will be fine without them. She said to start with larger items and then to end with smaller items and she also suggests looking at your things by category and some of the ones she mentions are like furniture, clothing, books, and photographs. Margarita suggests for you to start with a category that is easy for you to do, choose something that has a lot of items to choose from without a lot of sentimental connection to you. She says she always start with clothing and she warns again starting with things like photographs, journals, love letters, and things like that. 
and she says that it will get easier as you practice. The Kamari method starts with a clear vision of your ideal life, and there's a very specific order that you follow. You also tidy by category and not by room, starting with the clothing category, following by books, paper, komono, which is a Japanese word that means miscellaneous, and that will include everything else in your home, such as your sports equipment, your toiletries, your tools, your kitchen items, all of those items are komono. And lastly, you end with the sentimental item category. Marie says this is the order that everyone should follow and it goes from the easiest to the hardest category and as you go through each category you are honing your sensitivity to what brings you joy and so you are teaching yourself what brings you joy and by the time you get to the hard stuff like the sentimental items you will be more equipped to handle it when comparing these two methods while the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning doesn't have a specific order like the Komari method both books recommend for you to go from the easiest to the hardest and I think that that's something that's really important. If you know something is going to be hard for you, leave that till later. Don't start with the hard things because you could just get stuck there and not be able to complete the rest of them. When it comes to deciding what to keep versus what to discard, the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning says that clothing is easy because it's very size specific and that you should automatically get rid of anything that no longer fits. The author said all the clothing in your wardrobe should look good together and you should be able to mix and match all of them. You should only keep the items that you feel strongly that you will wear as well as the things that you have a strong sentimental connection to. For books in the Swedish art of death cleaning, the author suggests for you to give the books one last read and she only keeps the books that she hasn't read as well as things that she needs regular reference to such as dictionaries and atlas and things like that. For sentimental items that you know doesn't mean anything to anybody else, the author suggests you can put those items such as love letters or little rocks and dry flowers, souvenirs, things like that. She suggests you can put them in a box and to choose a box no bigger than the shoe, shoe box size and you should label that private, please throw away. This way when you pass, your family will know that this is the box that you wish for them to throw away and that they don't really need to go through it. As for other private items, she suggests for you to not hang on to anything that you know will shock or upset your family after you're gone. In the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning, there were also some suggestions that you should let your family and friends know that you are doing this and so that they can Come over and help you or they can see if there's any items that they would want. But she also notes to not give items to people who you know it doesn't fit the recipient's taste or the space that they live in. Be choosy about who you ask whether they want this item or not because some people will not want to say no because they don't want to offend you and then you're just really adding burden to them. Another suggestion she had was if you are invited to someone's house for lunch, instead of buying them something new, you can bring an item from your own home. In comparison, the Kumari method is actually very, very different. For clothing, it's about focusing on choosing the piece that really brings you joy and choosing the piece that will support you to live your ideal life. For books, Marie has a complete opposite view. She believes you shouldn't read your books and that you shouldn't hang on to books you haven't read. You should only keep the books that you truly want to read and is like your hall of fame of books at home. As for giving away your items, Marie suggests for you to not let your family see or let them know that you are doing your tidying festival because it could be really stressful for them to see you letting go of so many items and that you should only pass on the items to your family and friends and people you know if you know specifically they really want that item. For me, I always suggest for my clients to ask people more casually, maybe in a text message to say, hey, I'm letting go of this item. Does anybody want it? And Or maybe you can send out an email in a very non-intrusive way because you don't want to bring the item to somebody's house and maybe they'll feel bad by saying no, so they say yes, but then it's just more work for them to end up having to let it go later. Even though both method has really, really different philosophy, the Similarity is that be very, very selective about what to give away to people and that don't give away 
item to other people so that it adds to their burden. In conclusion, there are definitely a ton of similarities as well as a lot of differences between these two methods. When it comes down to it, both method wants to inspire you to put your life in order and to have gratitude in your heart while you are going through your thing. While I believe the Komari method can work for anyone, I don't believe that it will work for everyone. And the reason I say that is because I think whichever method you choose, you have to really believe in the method. So if you go into the Komari method very skeptically and you are not following your heart, you're not following the method, you're not going to be able to see the result. I think in general, it's important to let go of clutter and let go of anything that has served their purposes and so really any method you use to declutter is fine as long as it inspires action I think that would be the best method for you so really when it comes down to decluttering and organizing if you're going to follow a method the best method for you is to choose the one that you believe in because then you'll put your all into it and then you will actually see the results if you are interested in finding more about either method I will leave the links below for both of these books and so you can definitely check it out and of course I recommend for you to borrow them from the library because then it does not add to your book clutter at home. I hope you enjoyed today's comparison video and I will link above another comparison video I've done in the past and if you found today's video to be really helpful or if you liked it I hope you will give this video a thumbs up and to consider subscribing to my channel for future videos and until next time choose joy live well